Uh, this is a tweet from Shireen Mazari. Shireen Mazari is, uh, she is the Minister for Human Rights in Pakistan, in Imran Khan, Prime Minister Imran Khan of Pakistan, his cabinet. And so she put out this tweet on November 21st, right? Uh, and this is after Macron announced that he is going to ban homeschooling, essentially, and require that all students get a an ID card with an ID number, right, to make sure that they're not they're not violating the ban. They're all attending school, right, with fines for people who don't. And this is what she tweeted out. She said, "Quote: Macron is doing to Muslims what the Nazis did to the Jews. Right? Muslim children will get ID numbers." Other children won't, just as Jews were forced to wear a yellow star on their clothing for identification. End quote. We're, okay, we refer to them as Yahtzees ah, here on this channel. I, this but okay. I swear, the next yeah. four episodes, I'll get it down. But so, so this is uh, sure it's a violation of Godwin's rule, and that's fine. We're, we're not huge fans of Godwin's rule here, but. This was like a ridiculously hyperbolic statement. Um, the second thing is it was completely false. Okay, not completely. I mean, what he well, pretty much completely. So this, when she's saying only Muslims will get those ID numbers, only kids from Muslim families, that's not true. Every child will get it. They're not giving these ID numbers on the basis of uh, religion or race or anything. They're giving it to all of the kids. And yes, it is a response to his crackdown on Islamic fundamentalism because France has suffered uh, three terrorist attacks in just the last month, okay? And it has the largest Muslim population in all of Western Europe, right? So, Wait, so, I mean, do people not have student IDs in other countries? Like, would any number, like the person that thinks that the student's getting uh, their own numbers... Do they think like any numbering, like do, do they have passport? If that's what it is like, if she's comparing that to what happened under Yahtzee Germany, um, does do passport numbers also? No, th yeah. so this is the, at first so there's two aspects to this. First of all, uh, he's doing this in response. No, 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 I'm not, I'm yeah. not criticizing response. I'm just saying you're criticizing the comparison because these, um, the people from what is this? Uh, human rights activist uh, official yeah. from Pakistan. She's the, the human rights minister in uh, minister. Uh, the, the Pakistani government. Yeah, in Pakistan, she's comparing Macron. Okay, so the reason why Macron is doing this is to make sure that all students are getting the proper education and they're not being raised in these echo chambers in this bubble by their parents, uh, separated from French society, separated from French values, um, which is which causes two separate things. One is radicalization and also segregation and creating this two-tier system in France. They want, he wants to make sure French, uh, French Muslims grow up f feeling French, feeling connected to the rest of, uh, to the rest of France, uh, French society, feeling like this is their country. Um, and this is not, not just good for French Muslims growing up, so that they feel part of the society. But it's also, I think it will help reduce anti-Muslim bigotry because more non-Muslim French people will grow up side by side French Muslims in their classes. They will be interacting with them. They will be doing group projects with them. Uh, they will become, do play with them in the, um, you know, in the playground uh, between classes. Uh, they would have to communicate with them. So I think it will help Muslim community as well if the next generation of Muslims see, grow up next to these Muslims instead of in, se in a separate part of, in separate schools, separate shopping places, separate, separate streets. I think this really helps both Muslims and non-Muslims, these, these kind of measures, right? But so that, I agree with very much what Macron is doing here. But I'm just wondering how this how this person managed to become from Pakistan managed to be the head of human rights. Like, how, what kind of credentials do you need? What kind of education do you need to become the head of human rights? If you compare giving students numbers, ID numbers, so that you could track the education that they're getting, if you could compare that with 
targeting you, targeting Jews under uh, um, Yahtzee Germany like yes yeah, really like I mean and if if you want to make that comparison like wouldn't but the situation in Pakistan be a lot closer I mean given considering like officially announcing an entire group of Ahmadis as non-Muslim in an Islamic country and a, a direct target of, um, you know, um, harassment and legal punishment. Like, isn't that, I mean, that's not, even that is not close to what happened to happen in Nazi Germany, but isn't that like a bit close? Like really like numbering? Okay, but again, if you just give hand out numbers to people and that's all of a sudden oppression, Again, password numbers become oppression, wouldn't they? Like, I don't know, maybe I'm misreading it's, my well, contract. No, you absolutely nailed it. So the difference between this and the comparison she's making under Yahtzee Germany is that, <laughs> is that this is pro-Muslim. This is an attempt at being inclusive, mm -hmm. okay? It's not that, you know, we're not even, you know, you said, and you correctly said, that uh, what Macron is doing is he wants these young kids from Muslim families in France to feel like they're part of French society. He will it, he wants them to feel like they're part of their society? French society is their society. They they're are French. French. They're right. French. So th he does not want them to be excluded. He wants them to go to school with all of the other French kids. He wants them to be at equal standing with all of the other French kids. All of the other non-Muslim French kids are also getting ID numbers. And to the question you were asking about passports and things, yeah, you know, you have your social insurance numbers, social security number, whatever, but uh, there isn't anything that actually specifically tracks students at the governmental level, right? So universities will sometimes give students their student ID numbers and things like that, but the government doesn't usually do that. What he's doing is he wants the government to do it because he wants to a lot of this stuff that's happening in France is homegrown. It's homegrown. So he wants to make sure, right, that the kids who are from, you know, other non-conventionally French cultures, like, you know, from Muslim families uh, or other, like, Christian fundamentalist families or whatever, like, these kids don't get left behind. They don't become indoctrinated, right? They're not um, – and this is a problem. The, the U.S. doesn't do this, and that's why you go to Utah – and you see the Mormon kids, right? What, what they're growing up with, right? They're going through child abuse. Like nobody even knows. They're in a in a bubble. Scientologists. They keep them. We had remember when we had da, uh, that uh, uh, what was his name uh, Ron Miscavige on the show, and he was talking about what it was like being in that Scientology compound and how terrible it was for the kids, right? You look at uh, the, the we had Ari Hershkowitz on the show, right? The the kid who grew up in among Hasidic Jews, and they didn't even, a lot of them didn't even know English. They had no way to integrate into American society, even though they were living in the U.S. Right? I mean, this is the kind of thing that, this is a big problem in a lot of Western countries, but what Macron is doing is he's saying, no, if you are a child, right, and you just happen to be born into a family that wants to keep you separate from your society, from your people, from your potential peers, we're not going to allow that. When you grow older, you can make that decision, but we're not going to let you be brainwashed and indoctrinated. So homeschooling is being banned unless for very special situations like handicapped children or some other special That's needs. Right. I don't know, right? Um, <clears throat> but what about, John is asking in the live chat, what about private schools? Still allowed, Islamic private schools? Is that allowed? Uh, like faith-based Islamic schools. Yes, he's asking. That's a good question. I'm looking it up. Uh, as far as I know, mm -hmm. I think that he wants to uh, crack down on uh, Islamic schools as well. He wants to crack down on um, uh, mosques mm -hmm. that are receiving foreign funding. So he's allowing some of that stuff, but he so, wants to... Yeah, go ahead. What about people who say, like, okay, homeschooling should be allowed. That's too much government overreach to ban homeschooling what do you think to that well i mean that that's a question so he's uh he's disagreeing with it that's why this is controversial because it's a uh look when it comes to children it's kind of interesting that this is i mean even in the us and canada it's like this that children are not really if you look at children as property the guardian of the kid 
ultimately is the government, right? The government is a guardian of the child. The parents have a lot of leeway to raise the kids the way they want. The moment you abuse a child, if you are a Christian scientist and you decide not to give your kid antibiotics for life-threatening bacterial infection, the government and the courts are going to intervene. and They're going to take mm. that child away from you and give them life-saving treatment. But if you are, if it's non-life-saving, if it's non-threatening, you know, they they want to try alternative stuff. They usually give leeway to that. So this is it's it's kind of a blurred line in terms of the outreach. But when there is a case of direct abuse, right, hmm. or uh, then some governments think that they should step in, right. So this is just an arbitrary kind of um, designation in terms of you know where that line is. You know, when it comes to government involvement, I always see myself as very aggressively on many examples towards more freedom rather than less freedom. Okay. There are some, there are many exceptions, but more often I see myself as a less government involvement in when it comes to personal freedom. Um, but that doesn't apply to children at all for me. When, when it, I don't think like we, uh, the freedoms that we're fighting for, I think mo uh, the, is applies to adults. Uh, I don't think the children deserve a lot of the freedoms that we have been fighting for adults for, right? Like we do not, we do not give children the freedom not to go to school, right? Or not to do their homework or to eat whatever they want. Um, consent really doesn't matter. Like if children were like, yeah, I want to be, I want to work at a mine. I get full consent. I want to be <laughs> like, I want to work at it. Like, you know, yeah, we don't care. Like you don't, sorry, you don't get to work. You don't get to go to war, even if you fully consent. Right. Um, so, or, or get a tattoo. Like let's say the child say like, I fully consent. I want a tattoo on my back. I'm like, yeah, sorry. You don't have that freedom. You can't do that. Um, we can chop off your yeah, foreskin or, though. We can go, we can mutilate your genitals. That but, yeah. That, yeah, that should be taken. God away. allowed that. That's why. Yeah, no, but I'm just saying like when it comes to children, the government has a role to protect its citizens. Um, you, you know, when it comes to trading secure, um, freedom for security, um, when it comes to adults, I'm more like on the side of freedom. But when it comes to children, because they do not have the mental capacity of adults, it's more on the side of security, right? That's why, for example, with vaccines, right? Children should get vaccinated. There's no ifs or buts about it. Uh, the government can, like the, a lot of the government overreach that I consider to be overreach for adults, when it comes to children, I think it's completely justified, right? Well, because because it, with the security, you're securing their freedom, right? Because if you don't, right then what you're doing is you're clamping down on their freedom. If you're allowed to just put your four-year-old daughter in a burqa and hijab and have her stay home isolated from everybody, just reading the Quran all the time and not teaching her math and science because you want her to get married instead of become an engineer, then right. you are abusing that child. You're restricting and destroying that child's freedom, right? You're, you're sort of, the, uh, you're, you're clamping down on it before it even has a chance to evolve. Right. right. And, so, par mm -hmm. and parents, I mean, a lot of people talk about parents' rights. I mean, to me, I always find that confusing is because it seems like par what, what parents' rights are you talking about? These are citizens of a country that require more protection than other citizens because first they, especially from people that they trust the most, which are the parents um, who could be abusing them, who are the people that they trust the most. So, so they're the most vulnerable. So if the parents are not raising them up properly or giving them a proper information or not protecting them against the disease, the government has more responsibility to protect them from the parents than any other group of people, you know, because these are the people that could be the source of harm to them at more than anyone else. So when they saw talk, when they say parents' right, I like, no, the children, the children's rights is more important to me than the parents' right. And the parents like, what do you mean parents' right? The parents don't own the children. These are like, just because it came out of your body, that doesn't mean like, it's your property or something, right? Do you know, these are, do you know something? These yeah. are citizens and the government has a responsibility uh, over protecting, especially if it, if the harm is coming from the parents, but go on. Yeah, you know something? Remember when we had C.B. Rahman on the show, the pediatrician, 
Um, mm. And she was talking about, I, th I think it was on this podcast where she talked about the amount of child abuse she sees as a pediatrician. Well, I used to do, uh, as a pathologist, I did autopsies and, and I did a lot of children's autopsies, right? Little kids. And you read the clinical histories of their mothers, right? Often, you know, the mothers, the fathers, they were d doing cocaine. I remember seeing one uh, kid, uh, one mother who was really young, she'd had like five or six uh, uh, miscarriages and you know then you know one of our kids had died and it's now what's interesting is that when people adopt do you have any friends who've adopted children right so um, no okay I, I have a lot of friends who've adopted kids and I don't have a lot of friends to begin with oh I mean well you know that's what I'm here for um I, I, so when you have um when people go and adopt Armin they make you do police background checks, they make you go through hell. And these are people who've been desperate to have kids. They can't have kids, so they decide to adopt. And they will spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, not just on, like, just to get an adopted child. If they're trying to bring them in, their registration, accepting them as citizens, you know, it's insane what they have to go through just to see that they're qualified parents. But when it comes to reproducing, People can just have kids, and I've always said an ideal world. And this is like okay, I'm not for you know uh, this whole forced reproduction or reproductive restrictions, but you know it it would be I, I almost feel like you need to have a license to be able to have a child. Like that's how important it is. So people screw up. I they, I don't agree with that policy. I don't think you should. Mm -hmm. But I'm just saying, just as a as a you know as a sort of whimsical thing. It's it's amazing the way that parents can destroy their kids, right? Is incredible. It's incredible the way they indoctrinate them, the way that they abuse them, uh, and especially a lot of this is in the name of religion. You know, we've seen that over and over again. So, and the, I think this is a, a good thing. It's like okay, you know, we're not going to. You are. You have parents. As parents, you have freedom. But we, every kid is. Every kid has to go to school. So what we're doing is we're just making sure that they have to go to school to one of our public schools.